So this right here is the Galaxy Note 20, which is the phone you'd be buying if you wanted the newest Galaxy Note, but you wanted to save $300 and you didn't want to haul around one of the biggest phones ever made. And the Galaxy Note 20 didn't get any kind of crazy name, just the Note 20, not the Note 20 Plus, not the Ultra, not the Mini, just the Note 20. And this phone honestly has been getting really controversial reviews. Some people love it, some people hate it, some people are saying it has too many compromises. And so Samsung is in this new kind of dilemma where their flagship phones are creeping up more and more expensive, being now $1,300 for the top model. And then their mid-range ones are also coming up in price as well and as in features too. So the Note 10 Lite, for example, is only a few hundred dollars less and offers a lot of the same stuff. So that puts us in a really interesting situation and we have a lot to talk about in this video. So obviously I'll get into what this phone can do, how well it can do it, and of course, if it's worth the money, but I wanna first take a look at the physical aspects of this phone. And I wanna start off with the elephant in the room. Most people, if you've seen any review so far, they, the first thing they address is the plastic back. It's for most people that consider this a big drawback. And honestly, I would say that if you hold it up next to the glass back of the Ultra, you'll see that it has really the same shine, the same gloss, uh, really similar color levels as well. So from just an aesthetic, if it's sitting on a table, you probably would not know that this is not the glass back. You wouldn't be able to tell which one is a plastic back for most people. Now, once you pick it up and start feeling it, the actual texture on the back is also really similar. They feel pretty similar until you start pressing on it. And there is a really, really, really slight flex that, you know, if you really picked it up and started pinching it, you might be able to guess that this one is the plastic version and the other one is the glass version. But until you do that, you probably wouldn't really notice that it's a plastic back. So while that is a really big drawback for some people, I would say personally, I'm not necessarily gonna hold that against the phone here. Now, there are some other things that I will hold against this phone, but the plastic back, like I said, some people actually do prefer it. And aesthetically, it's really not that different. Now on the top left corner of the back, we have the camera bump. This one is very different from the Note 20 Ultra. In fact, I will be doing a full comparison head to head of these two phones in the future. So if you wanna see that, go down and click subscribe. But this one doesn't have the periscope lens, which is why the camera bump is so much smaller, but we still have the three camera setup. In fact, the, the, the best camera of the three, the telephoto lens is a 64 megapixel shooter, which should give you really good zoom capabilities up to 30X and really good photos in general. On the top right, we have our, our, our flash right there. We don't have any kind of depth camera or laser autofocus or anything like that. Honestly, I don't know that you necessarily need that with this, with this camera set. Then on the bottom right, we have our microphone, which I'll test out later on, should be really good for videos. In the middle of the back, we have reverse wireless charging and regular wireless charging to charge your phone up or charge your peripheral devices. So that's a really nice flagship feature to have on here. And it's one of the things that really differentiates this from some of the more budget lines of phones. Now on the bottom, we have our speaker, we have our S Pen on the left side now, and we have the USB Type-C, no headphone jack, and of course we have a microphone. Now something interesting about the USB Type-C is without a headphone jack, if you want to listen to earbuds, you will either have to get a dongle or USB-C earbuds, and the USB-C earbuds used to come in this box, but for in the US, for some reason, they just don't include them in here. I think for a thousand dollar phone, it's really weird that they did not include that and did not include like, you know, some Galaxy Buds or something like that. I mean, if you pre-order, you get some credit towards that, but it just seems like that's something that probably should come in the box. Now on the top, we have our SIM tray. This SIM tray is not an SD card slot. So not only is this not dual SIM, but it also has no expandable storage. And so if you're buying this phone, it's coming with 128 gigabytes of storage. On the right side, we have our buttons. They're all on the right side now compared to the Note 10 last year when they were all on the left side. So it should be more accessible for your thumb, but also kind of difficult to take a screenshot. Looking at the front, this is where it starts to get a little iffy on this phone. So we have a 6.7 inch display. That's awesome. It does not have rounded edges, so it's just a flat display. Some people like that, some people don't like that. The benefit is you won't have any kind of palm rejection issues. The downside is your bezels are definitely larger on this phone. You also won't have things like edge lighting. Another drawback is the hole punch camera on the top, which is significantly larger than we're seeing on the S20 or the Note 20 Ultra or so many other Samsung phones. Although I believe it's the same size as last year's Note 10 phone series, it is a bit of an eyesore when you look at the phone on the front and you're used to the smaller hole punch cameras. And we didn't even really get to the big drawback. The big one that I, I really can't let Samsung slide on this one, the screen is 1080p. And on top of that, it's not 120 hertz. Instead, it's a 60 hertz 1080p display. And that's the same display we're seeing on a lot of the mid-range phones out there. So considering so many other phones at the $1,000 price point have you know, quad HD, they have 120 hertz, they at least have 90 hertz. 
the slower display or the slower refresh rate on this phone is kind of a bit of a drawback. Now, realistically, a lot of people using this phone won't necessarily notice the difference and you won't really see any kind of issue with that, but charging that price point for a 60 Hertz 1080p display is definitely a drawback. There are some benefits with this screen, however. The fingerprint sensor, I think, is really in a great location. The S Pen on this phone also has a significantly lower latency, coming in at about 26 milliseconds, which is almost imperceivable. Last year, I think it was around 45 for the Note 10, so that's a major improvement there, but it's still not at the level of the Note 20 Ultra, which has a nine millisecond, so that's significantly faster. But again, like I said, the average user, you probably won't perceive that difference when you're just trying to write or scribble around. Now, the internals of this phone are honestly pretty impressive. So the chipset is the Snapdragon 865 Plus, which is the fastest Android chipset we have. It's the exact same one we see on the Note 20 Ultra. It's faster than the S20 lineup. It's faster than the S20 Ultra. And so it's really a fast processor. We can get up to eight gigabytes of RAM. We have 128 gigabytes of storage and we have 5G capabilities for connectivity on this phone. So all of that are, those are some flagship specs there. This also has a 4,300 milliamp hour battery, which is kind of an unsung win for this one because having a smaller screen, having a slower refresh rate and having a lower screen quality in comparison to the Ultra means that the battery life on this should be significantly longer. So now I mentioned the cameras a little bit, but let's actually get into a full test now and see what this camera is actually capable of doing. All right, so this is what the selfie camera looks like and sounds like. Comment down below, let me know if this is clear. Uh, honestly, I'd say that, I mean, it's given a lot of daylight right now, it's doing a really good job with the colors and the dynamic range. All right, now this is the rear camera, again, shooting in 4K. And I think this sounds really good because we have a microphone right on board, but comment down below. Let me know if this sounds good to you guys and let's test out the camera with some other clips. All right, now this is the rear facing camera and I assume the audio would probably sound better from the other side. So we're just gonna zoom in. And that's all the way at 10X zoom right there. So if we go back out, you can easily go back to ultra wide or the standard lens. So starting with the rear camera, you can see overall good sharpness, good saturation, and we'll show more of these in a second. Uh, but getting into just the skin tones on the selfie camera, as you can see here, overall it's a little washed out, but it looks generally decent in portrait mode or live focus mode. I think this did an excellent job, it looks much better. Now the rear camera, skin tones look better, overall good balance, good sharpness. And when you go into the live focus mode, it does zoom in, but it still does a really, really good job. Now here's the ultra wide angle lens. As we crop into 1x zoom, you'll see the color still looks really consistent, really good sharpness. Using the telephoto lens, which is more of a hybrid zoom actually at 3x, again, really, really good crisp photos. Here at 20x, you can still see it's not the most usable photo. And then at 30x, this is kind of more of a blur, uh, but you can still kind of see what's going on. Now the 108 megapixel camera gives you tons and tons of detail, but definitely cuts out a little bit of that saturation. And then here's a dark photo not using night mode, and then as soon as you turn night mode on, you can see it does a much better job, although it does a little bit of over sharpening, so I found that if you give it even a little bit of extra light, it really does an excellent job. All right, so let's get into some pros and cons with this phone to figure out if it's actually worth $1,000. And of course, $1,000 is just the price point at the time of making this video. I'll put a link down below because Samsung phones are known to change in price especially around maybe like Black Friday, for example. So the pros, this has really strong haptics. I really like the feedback on this when you're getting notifications or playing games or whatever you're doing, it has a really nice, strong haptic feedback. They also have some really cool S Pen features on here. So besides the low latency, you also have some S Pen gestures, the like air gestures that I generally don't use, like zooming in on your camera. I think that's kind of pointless. Uh, the things like taking a screenshot, again, kind of pointless, but I do use the S Pen for writing, for taking notes and for using it to remotely take pictures with my camera, especially if you're in like a group photo, for example. So those are things that the S Pen does really well. The minimum, like honestly, the minimal camera wobble is really a nice feature on this one. Even though this phone is slightly thicker than the S20 Ultra, the camera bump is so much shallower that getting any case at all would totally eliminate the camera wobble. And even without a case, the camera wobble is relatively minimal. It's really not that extreme, or at least nowhere near the level of the Ultra. And then the last big pro I wanna talk about is something I mentioned before, and that is the good battery life on this phone. It should easily be getting you through an entire day with really no problems at all. Now, getting into the cons, as I said, not having earbuds in the box is a big drawback for me. Not having a screen protector pre-installed, so I'm gonna to have to sit here and actually try to put one on myself 
For $1,000, so many other phones just come with a screen protector pre-installed, and I think that's really nice to have. And then the last one, unfortunately, is just the screen. I mean, I know that this is still a really hefty upgrade from the Note 10 last year, especially from the base level. So this is a bigger screen. It's a just overall better phone. But the $1,000 price point is just so competitive these days that you really can't have a 1080p 60 hertz display. All right, so should you buy the Note 20? Well, honestly, it's a very impressive phone. It has a really great processor, it has a very large screen, has a great camera set, great S Pen. It's a major upgrade from last year's Note 10. But like I said, it's a very competitive space out there. So I would say the people who would most enjoy this phone would be people who don't really care that much about the refresh rate or the screen quality, and they still want a great Note experience that's a larger screen, has a great battery life, and doesn't cost $1,300, and is you know slightly smaller than the Ultra. So for those people, this is going to be a great phone. But for almost anyone else who has $1,000 to spend on a phone, I would say this one might be a little bit overpriced. If Samsung gave it a 120 hertz display, I definitely wouldn't say that, or if the price slid down to maybe like $850 or $900, then I would say it's definitely a great buy. But at $1,000, it is a little bit too expensive in my opinion, but comment down below. Let me know what you think of this phone. Like I said, it's definitely an excellent phone, really great upgrades, but that's just so expensive for a phone that has this display and a plastic back. So again, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think of this. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.